Uh, got around OG7 back here. And today, I have some interesting tales of victory and glory that I will elaborate to you through stories and fables and tales to take you through a journey from being an average normal Joe to becoming a superhero of your own fashion. And how we do that by getting you in touch with your inner animal, dude. That's where you get the super saiyan and the power to accomplish great things when you get away from civilized society and get in touch with barbarism, man. Hey guys, just got in, man. And uh, man, it's been an exciting trip, bro. And uh, man, I'm exhausted, but I had to make this video because as I said to you guys, I was gonna make a, a new Patreon tier and I tried to do a $1, try to be a man of my word. Patreon wouldn't let me do it because I got specific tiers and they want specific gaps. But anyways, $2, man. What's one more dollar? But I wanted to share with you what I'm going to have going on over there and what goes into the topic of this video. So what I'm going to have going on over there, all the stuff from the Warriors Den. So my Warriors Den channel, I had interviews with other martial artists, some world famous, some not, some savage, some gentlemen. And uh, I had a lot of outtakes from when I was training Filipino martial arts and combat hapkido and just training with some other guys. I put it all over there. It didn't take off like I wanted to. And it's okay, guys, because sometimes, dude, you have to fail in order to succeed. But you guys are going to get a benefit of that. So over at my Patreon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the Warriors Den stuff and I'm going to differentiate it on the different tiers. So the $2 tier is just going to be like the Warrior mentality the mindset that you need to have in this everyday life in our society dude because dude i'm gonna make a video called prison planet and here's why with COVID 19 and all, a lot of other natural disasters happening all over the globe dude the prisons are overpopulated they don't have the medical staff to deal with outbreaks and and pandemics and things like that they don't they're not built for that they're just built to have some walls there if you get sick, you know, you just die, but there's too many dead bodies. It's not going to work out for the penal system. So they're releasing a lot of inmates in droves that aren't really uh, rehabilitated. And so they come coming onto the street with the prison mentality, a savage mentality. And when they interface with you, you got to have something inside. Because this is what I learned in the military, dude. You could be the most honorable, moralistic nicest gentleman in the world but when you when somebody breaks into your house and trying to do something to your wife or your kids that you love your progeny you got to be able to get in touch with the inner savage and if you don't do it regularly it's like running right i'm gonna tell you a quick story a quick joke before we get into this video so you got you know two hunters out they're hunting for bears no they're hunting for deer and so the one guy man you know he runs three times a week you know he just does you know a little bit of workouts and stuff, some cardio, you know, stretches here and there. And his buddy, you know, he relies on his rifle. Like this guy's the consummate weaponsmith. He's got all kind of rifles and guns, and he he's a he's a he's a metal smith. He builds rifles and guns and weapons and things. He shoots a lot. So they're going out hunting for deer, man. So then all of a sudden, this big ass fucking grizzly comes out, man. So what happens is the the baby grizzly walks past. And then whenever you see a baby grizzly, it's like the movie um, with Leonardo DiCaprio. I forget the name of it, man. Revenant. You see a baby grizzly, you know, the mama grizzly ain't far behind. And then the daddy grizzly, man. So then they see the baby grizzly and then they carry the mama. Like that. So then the one dude who runs all the time, man, he says he starts to take off the run and his buddy goes, hey. You can't outrun a grizzly, man. And his buddy says, all I got to do is outrun you. So the whole thing, dude, in this life that we're living in the tumultuous times that are going to start coming to our great country, that's why I'm leaving. It's going to be an influx of uh, terrorism and terrorists, dude, and Middle Eastern people, nothing against Middle Eastern people. But when you come from a war-torn country, your psyche is a little different, dude. You see people that have... You come over here, you don't have anything, dude, because you're coming over as a political refugee and you see people that have. It's just human nature, dude. When you're used to surviving, dude, 
and you're used to living on the edge, you're used to just taking stuff, man. It doesn't make them bad or good, just the way it is. Americans, we're, we're soft. I'm not going to say we. Americans are soft people because we, you guys don't have to go through hardships. So anyway, that's what's going to be going on. I'm going to be sending I'm going to be sending them over to my Patreon, dude. And occasionally I'm going to leak some over to YouTube that I think will be beneficial to you guys that are into, you know, being a warrior scholar. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to give you a little teaser of what's going on. But first, let me get to the title of the video. The title of the video today is In Prison, You Must Learn When to Strike and When to Stalk Your Prey. And I think this is a very interesting, thought-provoking topic because, dude, I want to tell you about something, man. There's two types of people. There's the people that are prepared for situations and they know how to act. That's why I really love the military. The military took me from an undisciplined hood dude, you know, a thug. I was a mugger and a jacker. And it made me a regimented machine like the dude from The Accountant, bro. Because the military always had you prepared. It was urban weight. Like you always prepared, always training, always getting ready, dude. And I never understood it, man. But then when the time to come to war, bro, then you just got natural instincts. And that's the same thing I do. Like these martial arts schools I train here. Let me tell you what I did, guys, before I get into the video. Whenever I moved to a new city, I, I Google all the martial arts places, dude. Even the ones I don't like, you know, like I don't want to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu no more or Judo. But I want to see what they got. I've already done it. I want to see what they got. I don't want to do Taekwondo, but I want to see what they got. Maybe I'll learn something. So I sit and I go through all the schools. I even take a class. And the ones that resonate with my spirit when I'm thinking like, oh, would this work if I was at the bank and somebody tried to rob me? Would this work if I was at the gas station somebody tried to kidnap me? Would this work if I was in a the movie theater somebody came in with a gun and started shooting? I use those scenarios in my head. And if I feel like the stuff will work, I take it. So why is that important, guys? Because, like, dude, I always train for battle. I just That's just the way I'm wired. And I call it insecurity. You call it being scared. You can call it whatever you want. I'm always training, dude. So whenever I know another man wants to accost me, the first thing I ask him is this. I hope you've been training and taking your Flintstone vitamins and saying your prayers. Because now we're going to go into my lab. My zone, this is what I do, this is what I prepare for, this is what I was built for, and this is what I was created for. So let's get it on, man. So anyway, I want to share that with you because uh, I want to I want to give you a little taste of this of what I had going on over there. I want you guys to I want you guys to share this here because I want to I want to get into the topic of this video. So let's see here. Uh, where is it? Uh, dang, man. I always try to get ready for you guys, man. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, here it is. No, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Um, just bear with me, man. I'm trying to be a more technolog technologically savvy dude. So I'm gonna give you the original one, man. Just wanna come on, welcome you to the Warriors then. I'm very excited, man. This is a project I've been working on for two to three years, actually. We coordinated a lot of the guys I've trained martial arts with. We put together a program and a channel specifically for warriors who want to come on the internet doing this COVID-19 thing, learn about different strategies and techniques and fighting um, uh, mentalities to turn you into a modern-day warrior. Now, if you're not a warrior, you might say to yourself, why do I want to become a warrior? I just want to explain to you with all this COVID-19 thing and all this unexpected stuff and the turmoil in the world, there's certain parts of the world in our specific country where people are robbing and raping and looting just because they lost their jobs, they lost their homes, all kinds of things like that. And this channel is for men to come together as men to discuss the mentality of a warrior, techniques, strategies, training, and also fitness, man. I think this is very important for your self-esteem. A lot of young guys need this, even older guys. So if you're interested in learning about martial arts and survival techniques and combatives, this is the channel for you guys. We're going to specifically do movie reviews and book reviews like this one here. This is one of my favorite books, The Warrior Mindset. It goes way into what it's like to be a special ops operative, survival combatives. It's another good one. Aikido. 
the dynamic spear. I love this because it helped me to incorporate Aikido with my Judo and Jiu Jitsu. This made me unstoppable. And this one, my favorite, last but not least, my boy Bruce Lee. The tale of Ji Kun Do, man. And so, what we're going to do, me and my friends, man, and the different martial arts I'm training with, we're going to actually go over movies and books and actual training techniques to give you the best distilled version of what works what actually doesn't work. We're going to tell you why it does work. And the stuff that doesn't work, we're going to tell you why it doesn't work and only waste your time to utilize that. So if you want to become a modern day warrior, this is the channel for you. I look forward to talking with you guys. Take care and talk to you soon. Okay, guys. Um, so basically, I wanted to give you an intro into that because um, I had this. Oh shoot! I don't. I didn't stop the other one. Let me let me stop the other one here. Let me see. Uh, Tonight on search for the. Okay, so I got to stop that. And I want to go here, man. Before I before I ramble on, as you guys say, and let me see where my mouse my mouse stopped working, dude. That's oh here it is right here. Okay, here it is. Okay, guys, I'm going to go to uh, Wiki Difference, and I want to explain to you why this should be important to you. Because there's a there's a thing called W I F F M. What's in it for me? And I've I've been studying, you know, YouTube algorithms and the way that you guys the reach and the, the duration of the videos and what you guys find interesting, what you don't. So what's in it for you, man, whether you're a young guy, a middle-aged guy, an older guy, even if you're an old, decrepit guy, you got to understand a mindset. So whenever you go into prison, they call it a gladiator school, man. And I want to explain to you why they call it a gladiator school, because there's just a lot of battles, a lot of fights, and a lot of wars, dude. What you got to understand, people want to glorify gladiators, right? But to see, here's the whole thing. You don't want to glorify a gladiator. You want to glorify, you want to become a warrior. Look at a gladiator, and I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody, but when I look at women, like you look at a hot woman with big breasts, small waist, a fat ass, nice legs, long hair, potty, fucking cock sucking lips, right? When you look at her, dude, you got to get away from the lust of looking at you know, this is what happens to most guys. You look at what she can do for you, how she can make you feel, how she can help you release your fluids, take your hard boner and make it soft. You're always thinking about you. No, you want to look at her and what does she represent? Because look here, bro. Everything that glitters is not gold. What that means is, dude, you can take some dog shit and you can put it in a pretty ass package with bows on it and glitter and everything and even spray some perfume on it. But at the end of the day, there's shit inside of it. What does that have to do with anything, OG Silverback? When you look at a hot woman, and I'm not going to say all because that would be ignorant, but most hot women are born that way, dude. They just come out. Maybe their mom was hot. Maybe the dad has a hot gene inside of them that he passes on to the female species of his spermazoa. They're born that way, dude. Most hot women just come out of the womb hot. They don't have to work for it, dude. They don't have to eat clean. They don't have to do all this. Now, there are some ugly ducklings that were ugly and goofy, and then they learned about nutrition and, and uh, you know, makeup and hair and, and how to wear clothes and working out, and they transformed themselves. But then I'm talking about a naturally hot girl. When you look at a hot girl, you got to understand inside of her, as an underdeveloped little girl, child, all of her life, she's been told how beautiful she is. She's been getting the pretty privilege, the pretty people privilege. She, oh, you're so cute, you're so beautiful. She's been getting all kinds of passes, so now she's entitled. She has not developed her character. Why is that important? Most guys that go to prison, dude, they don't, and I was guilty of this too. They do not have control of their emotions, dude, or their logical thought process. That's why they're mostly in prison, because they do irrational things. It was me going into prison. I had to determine I didn't want to be in for the rest of my life. I had to really revamp my, myself and rewire my thinking. And I started understanding the difference between a gladiator and a warrior. The military had trained me to be a warrior. But I was given into my gladiator instincts because I was from the hood, raised by a single mom. And I, I, I just modeled her, you know, women when they're on their period or uh, menstruating or they got PMS or whatever, they just go off. And when you're a little dude, you think that's the way that's to go, but that's not how it's supposed to be. So when I, when I got out of prison, I really started studying the mentality 
of warriors. That's why I say modern day warrior scholar, right? And I wanted to give you the wiki difference definition because this is important. A warrior versus a gladiator, what's the difference? As now is the difference between warrior and gladiator is that the warrior is a person who is, man, what's wrong with my fucking mouse, man? Is a, hey, dude, I don't fucking play that fucking shit, man. Like, you better fucking act right, motherfucker, because I've paid a lot of money for this shit. Um, the, the now, as now is the difference between a warrior and a gladiator is that the warrior is a person who is actively engaged in battle, conflict, or warfare. A soldier or combatant, while a gladiator is a gladiator. You might say, well, that doesn't really explain a gladiator because a gladiator is just a dude that's basically a gladiator is a dude that got captured in battle and he's for the entertainment of the rich people, of the masses. He's a slave. And back then, when you were a slave, you just do what they want with you. So let me go down here and see if we can get a better definition. <laughs> Warrior. A person who is actively engaged in battle, conflict, or warfare, soldier or combatant. Gladiator. In ancient Rome, a person, professional or slave, who entertained the public by engaging in mortal combat with another or with an animal, wild animal. They were slaves, bro, and you were just forced to dance like the court jester, bro. You just go out there and motion. Warrior is trained. Like you're, what, it, what engaged means is you actively think about perfecting your craft, perfecting your skill, you're on it. And how that applies to the title of this video, dude. I wanted to share something with what I learned, man, because I always say to you guys, whenever you're incarcerated, you should become a student of human behavior. And that applies for the streets as well, especially if you're in the hood or the barrio or trader truck park, or you're in one of these like third world countries with just a lot of savagery going on. You gotta really slow down and don't let the intensity dude or the adrenaline take your ability to meditate dude and to focus that's why meditation and yoga is very important yoga comes from warriors guys you you, you don't let the adrenaline and the, and the stress and the craziness and the madness around you take over your thought process you got to really slow down and focus and this is what you'll find out dude you'll see what the emotional triggers are for guys and this is important because when i first got to prison dude I was an emotional time bomb because, uh, you know, not just because I was, I had a, an ounce of crack cocaine drug habit, doing that every day, dude, just wired on that, bro, but just all the shooting and the torture and the kidnapping and the home invasions, it's just a quick, they're just, dude, I was demonically possessed, just like the evil stuff I did, I had a demon in me, dude. So when I got to the pen and I was locked in there, dude, and I just was like a caged animal. I didn't know I had claustrophobia. And I had this rage because I was one of those dudes beating on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the wall. Let me out! Let me out of here! Until my knuckles were bloodied and I realized they wasn't going to let me out. So I had to learn to internalize my rage. But then when they let me out the cage, dude, I was like a caged animal. Anybody looked at me wrong, said something wrong, did something wrong, whatever, I was about about it. And that served me well initially because, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to go to jury trial, this and that, the other thing. It don't matter. I get 26 years. I'm at level five prison, bro. The home of the gladiators and the savages, bro. And it was just like I had a lot of internal anger to let out. But then for whatever reason, I think because my mom prayed for me or maybe she talked to my ex-wife or my family talked to her. I don't know. She found it in her heart to submit my our marriage certificate, the fact that I, you know, I had been to college and I had a, I had a, uh, you know, I had my associate's degree in business, you know, I was working as a bouncer and a bodyguard dude and a masseuse and a stripper, and I was in the military prior to, you know, getting kicked out. When they submitted all that information, I don't know how classification works, but you reclassified me. And they, they, uh, I got my, my, my attorney found a loophole in the fact that it gave me so much time to me back to court. So with my, all of my paperwork from the street and then my sentence got reduced, they reclassified me, dude, and dropped me down to level three. 
So, you know, my lawyer was in my ear and my family was in my ear because you got to go back to court. And it was like, dude, you because in, in prison, dude, I was breaking people off. You keep getting more time. But when I thought I was never getting out, it didn't matter. But once I realized I could see light at the end of the tunnel, maybe it was a far tunnel with a little bit of light. I realized, hey, I got a second chance. I'm not like these guys who are washed up. I got to reinvite what I'm doing because I can't let these savages turn me into a zombie when I'm locked up the rest of my life. So that's when I learned to lay in the cut. So as the alpha males do would confront me talking about, hey man, I run this prison, I run this yard, I run this unit. You understand that, my man? Like I run everything, you know me, I'm the shot caller. I would just sit back and I would observe like, okay, I hear you, my man, I'm just trying to do my own program. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get involved, in I ain't trying to run nothing. I'm just trying to do my thing. So that gave me some time, dude. So that I would just sit back in my cell. I never came out to the day room. The only time I came out was for you know, for uh, child release, work release, to lift weights, dude, or go to business or religious services or NAAA, some stuff like that. Other times I'd just be in my cell and I'd just be looking out into the day room, man, studying people. I would look, I would just, I had nothing better to do. I would just, I had already worked out. So I'm just studying people, dude. Like whenever I went to chow, I would study people, dude. Whenever I went to work or being a weight pal, I was always aware I was watching people. And this is what became important, dude. You always got some loose cannons in prison, dude. There's a lot of people that were just like me that were just, dude, like so angry and frustrated. Their life was washed up. They ain't got nothing to live for. Their family laid down on their old lady, wrote them a Dear John letter. Whatever the case is, they're just, man, so angry. And they're just looking for somebody to give them a glorious death, bro. Because a lot of people, it's not as easy as you think to do to commit suicide. So what I call them is, you know, this is important. I call them dead man walking. I've said this on other videos. They're just looking. They're walking in the yard like a rabid animal, dude. You know what I mean? Just looking to devour somebody and hoping that in the course of the battle, the person has a shank and knows how to use it really good and take them out, right? That's what they're praying for, bro. But some of these guys are so huge and strong, it's hard to get a glorious death, right? That's why they go after, you know I mean? They're looking to just go into battle and have somebody take them out. So what I noticed was, man, there's a lot of dudes that don't have anything to lose. And I was big and strong. I was about 340, about 6'3". Well, I think when I was in prison, I was 6'4" about 340 pounds, just savage. I was winning all the weightlifting competitions. I used to do martial arts on the yard till they put me in a hole. Some prisons, you know, you're not allowed to do martial arts on the yard, but that's doing what I told them I was a Buddhist. And they put me in a hole, let me out. You know, I found some paperwork saying that I was a Buddhist and that was part of my religious practice. It was a meditative thing. So anyway, a lot of guys seen that. They're like, oh man, that stuff don't work, man. I'll whoop your ass. And I was like, well, why don't you go ahead and slap me? We're going to find out. So what happened, there would be some dudes, bro, they would just help it on trying to enforce prison policy that they're the fucking alpha of the yard because they've been on the yard maybe 10, 15 years, and it's a big dude thing. And they just trying to, like, provoke me, dude, and entice me because they want to really test my metal, right? But they want me to be the one that initiates it. You know what I'm saying? So what I did was... I became very good at observing their emotional cues, man, and their weaknesses and strengths. Like I noticed whenever they would get a phone call, dude, from their old lady or a letter from their old lady or some money in their books, they'd be so happy. They'd be chill. They wouldn't want any problems. Life is good to spread with their homies, dude. And that, my friend, was the perfect time for me to strike. And I want to tell you why, guys. I learned this from reading Machiavelli, the Prince, and I want to share this with you guys. And this is a this is a very good skill I learned about duplicitous behavior. If you have to put in work on a dude, let's say you're a torpedo, or he disrespected you, or you just feel like he done some things that you just can't live with, and you got to put it, you got to put it, you got to put some work in on it. I know I always tell you if you're going to do it, if you got to do a fight, do it on the yard where everybody can see. I'm sticking to that story. 
But all I'm saying is, is the right time and the right place. What I mean by that is, I'm going to give you an example. A lot of the guys who wanted to challenge me, like it was mostly like, like the Crips or the Bloods, man, or maybe some of the Black Gorilla family. I was known for exhausting myself on the weight pad. Like, dude, I used, to, I used to train to failure, bro. See, a lot of dudes in prison, bro, while they do high reps, bro, they don't go to absolute failure. They just might do sets of 20 or 30 or whatever. You know what I mean? Because they want to keep adding weight on the bar. Me, the weight was irrelevant. I'm just whatever my, because you got to get in line. Like, say there's a bench, bro. And I just want to be honest with you. Maybe there's 15 dudes using the bench at that time frame. So they'll, put, they'll start with like one quarter on each side and they'll do it like, you know, 20 times. I do it 50 times and they put two quarters on and they might do it, you know, 20 times. I do it 30 times and they might put three quarters on all the way up till you get to 10 quarters. But then they're reserving their, they're reserving some gas in their tank so they can hit the, the, the 10 quarters because they feel like they're getting the biggest bang for their buck. Me being a, a champion powerlifter, I knew the biggest bang in my buck came from my recuperation of me exhausting myself. But a lot of dudes would watch me and they would see, I would I would train on a weight pile so hard, man, sometimes it'd be hard for me to walk because I'm the only, it was only me and a half full of dudes that did legs and back. I'm talking about lower back, not upper back. So some days I couldn't walk. I mean, you mean, you're talking, you're talking about squatting six, 700 pounds, then left at seven, 800 pounds for reps, bro, on a diet that's crappy, rotten bologna, cancerous chicken, moldy bread, spoiled milk, bro. It's all mental, bro. But they used to watch and wait, and they're, this was their belief, like, oh, dude, he's exhausted. This is what we're going to strike. But what they didn't know, I started practicing flow-based martial arts. So all flow-based martial arts, I don't want to be all like all these esoteric words. All flow-based martial arts is when a dude strikes you hard, bro, you go with the strike. Like, instead of, like, most dudes here, let me, let me, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to show you this here. Most guys that are big and strong when they fight and a dude punches you, dude, you want to be like, yeah, 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 here we go. You want to resist it. Flow-based martial arts is like this. When a dude hits you hard, bro, you feel where the energy is going, bro. And I got to demonstrate this to you so you understand. This is the dude's fist. And it's coming here, douche. Instead of me being a crow magnum dude, like, Arr! I just let it go like this. But watch this, watch this arm, bro. It just comes around. I'm actually letting his force generate through my body and I'm coming around. Bow! And for every action, there's a reaction. So when I come around this way, bow! And my other hand's coming this way, bow! And you use the dude's force against him. So that's why it was very foolish of them to try and wait till I was exhausted on the weight pile. But that's when I learned this secret technique, dude, that when you were in prison, you must learn when to strike and when to stalk your prey. So I did reverse psychology. I said, oh, the big strong dudes will wait till I'm exhausted because they think that's when I'm at my weakest. And that's when they would strike me. So I became a student of human behavior and it's called laying in the cut. So a dude would say something disrespectful to me, dude, or he would challenge my alpha male authority to be left alone. Like, no, nah, my man, you, you misunderstand. I'm just trying to do my own program. But I would lay back and I would watch him for myself. I would see that when he got the phone call from his old lady and she's sex talking, or he got some, he got a, a letter from his old lady with perfume or pussy juice on it, or he got a visit, dude, or he got a package, he got some nice books. He was so happy that he allowed the humanness to come out inside of me. And that, my friend, is when I would strike. Because, dude, what I'm trying to say is, like, when I try to say in the beginning, if you're a torpedo and you got to put a hit on a dude, let me tell you, let me look, look, look here. Say I got to put a hit on this dude right here with this chain. I got to put a hit on him. And I see him on a yard line. And I just approach him like that, right? Man, he's going to put his guards up. He's going to be like, yeah, what's up, pal? What's up, man? Let's do it, right? He's going to get ready, right? But here's the whole thing I want to share with you. If I, on the other hand, man, I got a nice book here, bro. And I have my shake in the book here. Well, this is this. I can't hide this in the book because it's too big. But I have this one in the book right here. 
And I'm like, hey, scoopy dooty day, life is good. I'm so happy. I got to come to the yard today. And I'm acting all like a, a oofish buffoon. I'm just skipping around, dooky that bop. And so here's this dude looking, oh man, that dude, man, he's just a, he's just a fool. And then I walk by him, hey man, have you ever read this book? And I just slice his throat, bro. He doesn't see it coming. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Maybe that's kind of a graphic scenario to give you, but all I'm saying is that when you're in prison, dude, and you're around a bunch of Cro-Magnum, barbarian, savage zombies, dead man walking, nothing to lose, they want you to check them out. Sometimes you got to learn, dude, when to strike, dude, and when to stalk your prey. And here's a term they call it in prison. It's called laying in the cut. And why is that an important video, dude? Because, dude, I've been learning through, you know, going through these different auditions and acting schools and going for parts and getting rejected. And, you know, people treat me like I'm nobody because they got so many roles and movies above me and they treat me like I'm a peon. It's okay, dude, because, dude, initially I can let my ego get in the way. I can get upset, dude. And let me tell you something, man. He who gets upset loses every time. That's why I try to help you guys get more into stoic, emotional intelligence, right? Learning how to, uh, I'm going to share this with you guys really quick. Learning how to work with your emotional intelligence, dude, is so key. And I'm sharing this with you guys because I was guilty of being a savage and a barbarian and a gladiator and a, and, a, and, a, and a full beast mode dude, all that stuff, bro. And I, I profess it in a little bit, but I'm sharing with you, dude, as I, as I transform and I grow and I become a better person and I'm on a higher vibration, I want to share with you guys the folly of my ways and what I've learned from being in prison, dude. Like, you got to know when to strike, dude, and when to stalk. And stocking is a good thing because, dude, you 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 like the you like the beast in the jungles, bro. Like, if you ever see a lion, dude, or a leopard, or a panther, Google it on YouTube, bro. They don't just come out running and stuff. They 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 go down low in the grass. You can't watch you can't watch your cat when they're trying to get a bird. They lay down and they wait, man, for the right moment, dude. That's all I'm trying to tell you, man. Like. That's why things that you experience in prison, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you guys to experience prison. I want you to live through my experiences in prison. The things that I experienced in prison helped me to transmute into society and become successful because the same thing I needed to do in prison, which was learn when to strike, when not to strike, and when to stalk my prey. I did the same thing on the street. I'm a student of human behavior. Like all my friends that have psychology degrees or have psychiatric practices, because I got a lot of diverse different friends. They, <coughs> excuse me, they um, give me props for my ability, dude. I can analyze people. Like when I meet people, dude, because I learned to be silent and I be quiet and I just focus on that person and the art of listening and watching. So I think, you know, you got the brucks of it. If not, you know, I encourage you guys to go over to my Patreon with the new $2 tier. It's going to be a lot of different diverse concepts, dude, and thought processes. Because here's what it comes down to. And I used to tell, I used to tell my kids this, and I tell my, my siblings what their kids, and I'm going to tell you as well. well I'm going to share with you. You do what you want. I'm going to share with you my philosophy. When your kid is growing up and they're small, you should expose them to sports. Art, theater, math, music, um, all kind of different sports, dude. All kind of different instruments, dude. All kind of different music. You want to bombard them with a lot of stuff. And I know what you're going to say. Hey, OG Sound Bank, it's going to be too much information because they're not going to focus. They're not going to specialize. And here's the whole thing. When your kid is young, dude, this even applies to you if you're older and if you've been sheltered. You want to expose yourself to as many different things as possible. And here's why. When you expose yourself to many different things as possible, things you never even considered doing, this was great about college, you will find your niche because as long as you do what you continue to be doing or what you've been taught to do or what you've been groomed to do from your hood, nurture versus nature, from your environment, dude, you're, you're, you're bombarded by the hood or the barrio or the, or the trailer park, dude. 
Are you from the jungles? Are you from a, a third, you know, a third world country in a impoverished place? And that's your paradigm, dude. Dude, you will never aspire to have anything else because you don't know anything else. But if you open up your mind, you open up your consciousness, dude, to many different things, just try things out, dude. That's what a 30-day program is so great on my Patreon because you get to try being a different person for 30 days, dude. And they say it takes 21 days to develop a habit. And it takes the fourth to 30 days to lock it in and ingrain it and make it your own. So what do you got to lose, dude? I tell people this all the time. Go forth and expand your comfort zone. You know, get out of your comfort zone because you can always go back to the comfort of your home. Go forth out into a new land and a new place to be a new person, bro, because you can always go back to the safety of what you know. But if you don't go out to find out what you don't know, how can you ever become anything other than what you currently are?